Hi YouTube, I'm checking in here at 10 weeks post-op. I am doing great. I'm so grateful everything is going well. Finally getting to walk around the house. But I wanted to hop on today and kind of just take you back 11 weeks ago when I first fell and where I am now and kind of the technicalities that no one really talks about. So I'll get started. So at negative one week, that's when I fell and I was supposed to go to the ER, but I'm like, I don't want to wait in the ER for about two hours. So I'm going to go to urgent care. And they're like, well, we're going to send you to the ER. I'm like, that's great. But luckily they wrote me a note. So I got in pretty quickly. So at the ER, they took my x-ray and they had determined that I had a fractured fibula. And this whole time I was kind of laughing. I thought it was just a swollen ankle. It was just a fall, a sprain or whatever. I never thought it would be anything more than that. So when they told me it was a fractured fibula, I was like, oh my gosh, no way. I'm so glad I went to the doctors. And then after that, they had told me that I'll be in a splint for a week until I go to the orthopedic doctor and then she'll determine if I'll need surgery. And I'm like, what the heck? Like I never thought at this moment I would need surgery. And I was like hoping and praying and talking to the universe that I wouldn't need surgery. Because if you look at my previous videos, I had two retinal detachments and I had to go under for both surgeries. It was just really traumatic and I never thought that I would have to do that again so soon, you know? Just really traumatized and never thought this would happen from falling off my scooter with my dog. So anyways, one week later, I go into the orthopedic doctor and she looks at my x-ray because I had to do x-rays that day. And the splint didn't help. My joints or ligaments or something, tendon, weren't reconnecting. So I had to do surgery. I immediately started crying. Like I have never cried that much in a doctor's office ever. She felt really bad for me. She said, you know, it's okay. Like you need this. If you don't, I highly recommend against that. You'd have arthritis pretty early on. So obviously I went with the surgery and she scheduled me in the next day. The next day I hadn't eaten. I had fasted for about seven hours. I think starting at midnight, I didn't drink or I tried not to drink as much water. I didn't eat. I got in around like eight. They didn't see me till like one or so. I can't even remember, but I have all my vlogs in the link below. So yeah, I was just waiting and waiting, just things building up. Finally, they're like, okay, let's do this. And I'm like, okay. And literally I was like counting backwards. And I think I was like listening to Taylor Swift music in the OR and they were really nice. It was basically a team of female nurses and doctors. And it's funny because my previous surgeon for my retinal detachment was a woman too. And she was about eight months pregnant, which is crazy, but go women. So then I wake up and the nurse that took care of me was really rude for some reason. I remember waking up with an oxygen mask and you know, I, I didn't wear my glasses. I didn't, couldn't find my glasses. I'm like, what's on my face? And she's like, it's an oxygen mask. It helps you breathe. And I'm like, what the heck did I do to you? I think I fell back asleep for a few more minutes. And then I wake up and I'm like, okay, I'm better now. I'm gonna look for my glasses and my phone to text my family. And she was standing there like, reading my vitals or something. And she's like, no videos. I'm like, I know. And she's like, nothing at all. I'm like, okay, I know. I'm like, what the frick is wrong with you? Anyways, moving on. She was super rude and about an hour later and two hospital rooms later, they finally let me go. And I go home and everything's fine. I had the nerve blocker, but I can still feel my toes. And the doctor like was like, oh, can you feel your toes? I'm like, yeah, I can feel my toes. That's what happened. I go home, everything's fine. Next morning, I wake up in a nice I was burning, like my ankle was burning. I was in fetal position crying. I just couldn't stop crying. It was just so painful. It was the worst pain of my life. I had been prescribed hydrocodone at the ER visit the week before. I didn't take a pill. I was gonna run out within 48 hours or so. I'm calling my doctor's office, my orthopedic doctor's office. They have this weird answering machine where you have to press a number to reach someone and I'm calling them like a dozen times at least. And within those dozen times, I reach someone like three times. I'm like, hey, I'm in crazy pain. I'm gonna run out of drugs, please help me. They're like, okay, we're gonna reach the doctor. And I'm like, okay, okay. 
and like 5 p.m. creeps up and they close at five, like a hard five and nothing like the pharmacy didn't get the prescription. Literally like 4.30 or so, I finally reached someone. They're like, okay, she's out of surgery. She's gonna send you your prescription. 8 p.m. comes around, I'm almost out of pills and finally like get a call from the pharmacy. Your prescription is ready. And I'm like, there is a Jesus, Buddha and Allah out there. So this whole time from when I fell to about two weeks post-op, when I saw my my doctor next, I was in a splint. So that first week before surgery, I was fine. I was showering, had a garbage bag over my splint every day. The week and two weeks after surgery, still in a splint, I didn't really shower unless I really had to. I didn't feel safe. So two weeks post-op, I finally had the splint taken off and I nearly passed out. And I was like really shocked that I was gonna pass out because I was ready for this. I like have this like intrigue, interesting, like curiosity to how my leg would look like after the splint was removed. And it was okay, it was just really skinny. It was bright orange from the iodine and just super wrinkly obviously cause the skin hadn't been getting oxygen. And I thought it was doing fine. And then I started to kind of pass out. So I, left the doctor's office. I think I cried some more and I was supposed to get my boot fitted that day, but I was just so traumatized that I decided to go home and sleep it off. And then the next day was when I got my boot fitted. And for some dumb reason, I didn't take any painkillers. And when I got my boot fitted, it was pretty painful. So this whole time for the whole three weeks, I had a splint from two weeks post-op till now is when I was able to free the ankle and do my range of motion exercises and whatnot. At around three weeks post-op, I stopped taking drugs. I was fine, I didn't feel too much pain, it was tolerable. And to be honest, the drugs were making me really constipated and just felt really gross on top of the pain I was feeling. It was just like really, really gross, you know? And I hadn't been showering either, so it was just like three times gross. So I'm really glad that I was at a good like pain tolerance level where I didn't need any drugs. And then four weeks post-op was when I figured out how to move myself in and out of the shower by myself. So that's when I started taking showers every day. Also at around four weeks, my skin started to peel. I had this crazy dark tan from Hawaii like two months before in October and my skin started peeling so my skin flakes were like this big and it was just really dark and really funny to look at and it didn't actually stop until 10 weeks for 10 weeks post-op so like it took a total of like six weeks for my skin to peel which is pretty funny at around five and a half weeks post-op, I finally figured out how to move upstairs. I had been downstairs the whole time. There's a guest room downstairs. My partner carried down my toiletries, my clothes, anything that I needed downstairs. And I was living fine, but one day I was just bored and decided to go upstairs and see how the situation looked like, make sure he wasn't, you know, trashing the upstairs that I worked so hard to maintain. So I literally like, backwards crab crawled upstairs and then there was a rolling chair waiting at me by the base of the stairs and that's how I would like move around the house. She looked at my x-ray, everything seems to be fine and she said it was okay to wait there. And like knowing my luck, I was like, oh my gosh, like something's gonna happen and I'm not gonna be able to start walking and I'm just gonna be delayed and it's just like, like babies are walking, you know, like why can't I walk or like, why me? It was just like very negative thinking. So around seven weeks, I started to weight bear. So that whole eight weeks of like falling to seven week post-op, I did not ever put my foot down. Like I never ever put weight on my right foot. But finally, seven weeks post-op, I was able to weight bear. And at first it was like really stiff. My, my ankle was really stiff. I couldn't even do like a 90 degree. And now like I'm okay walking with a cane, a walking cane or like pushing my office chair ahead of me as if it's a walker. It really depends on the day. It's been really cold lately. So I feel like I've been more stiff. I try to put a blanket on it and like a space heater. So seven weeks post up doctor's appointment. She said, no driving, no walking without the boot. And then I would have to start physical therapy when I see her next. And we haven't gotten there yet, obviously. I was walking in a boot for about a week and a half. And I'm like, this is so annoying. Like even walking in the house, like in my lunchtime and after work, 
I'd have to strap on my boo and walk up and down the hallway a few times for my workout. And I'm like, this is so annoying. So anyways, I stopped wearing my boo in the house, but if I'm at the house, obviously I'll wear it. So the next appointment is when she'll write me a prescription for my physical therapy appointment. And that's when I'm technically allowed to walk without my boo. So then now 10 weeks post-op, I am at the point where I can walk with a cane. First it was two crutches and a boot. And then now it's either two crutches or one crutch or a cane, like depending on that on the day and how my ankle is feeling. But yeah, everything seems to be okay. It's so much better. Like being able to walk, I feel a lot healthier and more happier and just being able to clean the house. So next time I check in with you guys will probably be me going to the doctor's office and getting clear to take off the boot and then me going to physical therapy and just more walking everywhere so that's where we are at 10 weeks post-op hope you enjoyed this recap thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time bye